This can be given a second chance. Be my guest. How do you make money for nothing? Oh, that looks very sporty. The answer could be hiding in the 30 million tonnes of household waste we throw out every year. You never told me it was this heavy. <laughs> yeah. That's why designer Jackie Joseph wants to get her hands on things before they hit the skip. That looks interesting. I'm a fashion designer turned upcycler with a keen eye for style. I take old, unwanted and abandoned things and transform them into on-trend treasures. And then I sell them for a profit. And with some of the country's elite designers and makers... I come bearing a gift. Really interesting. Whatever we do needs to pack a punch. She can transform her finds into desirable... I have never seen that done before. You're good. Valuable... I, I'm literally speechless. ..and hopefully saleable items. I had to put my glasses on, they're so bright. If Jackie is successful, yeah. then she can hand the profits back to the very people who had no idea there was cash to be made from their trash. Joking! You are joking! It's wall-to-wall -wall waste at the High Wickham Recycling Centre in Buckinghamshire, with locals lining up to clear their clutter. And clocking in to make some money is upcycler Jackie Joseph. Look at this. A line of cars, all the boots flying open. This is what I love to see. Jackie's determined to stop three items coming a cropper with the crushers. You've been busy, haven't you? She has special permission to scour the site. What are you throwing away today, then? In search of things with the potential to be sold on for cash. Oh, sorry, I'm just having a little nosy. <laughs> Greg's pulled in. Will his boot be worth a closer look? Oh, hello. Hello. This looks like a very nice collection. I love it. My name's Jackie. What's yours? My name is Greg. Greg, lovely to meet you. So, does this open up? Looks like yes, it, it opens, oh, it opens up. up in yeah, the centre. It, it yeah. will sit um, six people comfortably. Yeah. yeah. But, but yet you're throwing uh, it away. Yeah, I don't have the space, unfortunately. We recently bought a house and the lady <gasps> who owned the house kindly left them for us. Right. Um, we've used them, uh, but we don't have any space for them now because we've just recently procured a new set. Well, it looks like she might have had a go at um, painting. <laughs> she did a good job, actually. They're quite good chairs. I love them. I think, you know, they're quite charming. Would you mind if I took these off your hands? No, you can have them if you want them, absolutely. I would be so thrilled. And what I'll do is I'll keep in touch with you, and if I'm able to do anything with them, I'll come back and I'll show you. Is that that would right? be fantastic, yeah. Um, at least they'll go to good use. That would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you very, very much. I'm really pleased with that. I'll grab the tabletop and I'll come back for the rest. Oh, hello. <laughs> I'll be back! Jackie's first find is a dining table and four chairs. Any thoughts on what she'll do with them, Greg? I don't know. <laughs> I'll wait to be blown away and see what happens with it. <laughs> I'll keep an open mind. <laughs> well, I must say, it's a chunky table and chunky chairs as well. A little bit worse for wear, definitely seen better days. But all in all, it's a solid set. Yeah, I like it. But which maker can hopefully get this dining set looking good enough to eat your dinner off? Designer Sarah Peterson restores reclaimed furniture using bright and bold patterns. With her clever colour choices, Sarah can bring things back from the brink and let them live on. I absolutely love my job. It's not really even a job to me, actually. It's just some place that I come to have fun. It's my happy place, really. I don't really have a routine for getting into a creative space because I think I'm actually always there, really. There's on some kind of level inside my head, I'm always thinking of the next kind of design, being creative and working on different projects all the time. It's a joy. Glad to hear you like a creative challenge, Sarah. For this lot, you're going to need to bring some big ideas to the table. Jack is off to a flying start with one item set aside. What are you throwing away today, then? But with two still to find... You never know what's going to be there. 
She's back browsing the boots. Well, you know me, I'm always going for a strike. Actually, I wonder what I could do with a bowling ball. While you think about that, Bob and Janet have rocked up. But will you be bowled over by their rubbish? Oh, I like the look of that. My name's Jackie, what's yours? I'm Bob. Bob. I'm Janet. Janet, this looks really, really interesting. It's a, a, ra a record player, a radiogram. My mother bought it about 1965. She passed away recently. I'm so sorry to hear that. Your mum kept it in good condition. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It was her pride and joy. We tried to get it up and running again. It sort of worked, but the electrics inside yeah. are, you know... Yeah, yeah absolutely. 50-year-old vintage stuff, so... Well, exactly. Yeah. I love everything about it. It's got a great history. It's got, for me, a great look. Would you mind if I took it off your hands? If somebody can make some use of it, I would be absolutely over the moon. And so would my mum. Oh, oh I'm so, that makes me so happy. I'm going to go and grab a trolley um, and I'll be back to pick that up. Is that okay? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yes. Lovely. Thank you so much. I'll be back. Jack is waltzing off with a seriously stylish record player. Bob, are you relieved it's avoided the skip? If somebody can make use of it and love it as much as my mother did, I will be absolutely ecstatic. This is such a cool thing. I love everything about it. Yes, it's got a few scratches and knocks, but it's been around since the 60s and it's been well used and well loved. So, do I keep this as a music centre or do I turn it into a piece of furniture? I know someone who can answer that question. So, which maker does Jackie have lined up to hopefully amplify the radiogram's potential? It's Joel Poole. Joel is a furniture artist and a sign writer by trade who really knows how to make old pieces pop with art that speaks for itself. I think my style is quite unique. Um, I'm influenced by a lot of very, very different things. Um, pop art, typography, graphic design. I love bright colours. Um, I think colour is really important. Generally, it will lift people's spirits and make them smile a bit more, so I try and inject that into my work. And I try and put that all together and I'm turning things into things that people will love and cherish again, which is amazing. Well, Joel, this much-loved radiogram's already brimming with style. So, you'll need a sound idea of how to turn it up a notch. That's two items tucked away. Now Jackie's after something she can work on herself. Oh, what is that? Don't tell me. Picking you up. Oh, right. <laughs> Oh, yuck. Please don't try to upcycle that. Phil's arrived, but does he have anything more appetising? Oh, hi there. Hi. My name's Jackie. What's yours? Phil. Phil, lovely to meet you. you. I see that you're offloading. Absolutely. What's happening? Why are you doing this? It's basically because we're moving house, so it's oh, just a case you? of um, having a good clear out, yeah. Do you know what I spotted? All of these china pieces. Uh -huh. Are they... All yours? They're mostly, mostly from our sort of grandparents' era. Oh, really? They've been handed down, but yeah. to be quite honest, they're a bit dated, yeah. not for us, so right. uh, it's a case of clearance. I really like them. I know what you mean about them being dated, because they are, but there's something really quaint about them. I just feel I need to take them. Yeah, it's fine, and... Uh, is that all right? Yes, of course If it's... I take them, is Please, that OK? Please, help, help yourself. Do you know what, Phil? I have no idea what I'm going to do with them. <laughs> I have no idea. Thank I you very much. It. I'll try. <laughs> I will be in touch. OK, lovely. And hopefully, if I can do something with it, I'll come and show you. Yeah, is that all right? Yeah, please do. Please do. OK, you I'll take care. Enjoy. Whatever you're going to do with them. Jackie has China in her hands. Phil, any idea what she might do with it all? I, I really have no idea whether they're going to put on display or... or I have no idea, to be quite honest with you. But obviously, she obviously got some good ideas, otherwise she wouldn't have picked them up, I suppose. No pressure, Jackie. So, quite a, um, a mixed collection, but there's just something really quaint and English about them, isn't there? And I love all the floral decorations. I really don't know what I'm going to do with them. I've just got to really think. 
Maybe over a cup of tea? But I've got to really think cleverly about this lot. And with that, Jackie has her haul. Sarah's challenge is to somehow give the cumbersome dining set a contemporary update. Joel's job is to maximise the potential of the retro radiogram. And Jackie has a collection of crockery to get creative with. But will the results be smashing? Well, that's three fantastic items in the bag. They may not look that much now, but I see three little money makers. In Sandbatch, Jackie's had the radiogram delivered to Joel's workshop. Thoughts? Really looking forward to working on this. I love this kind of thing. These were like really the pride of people's homes back in the 60s and 70s. So hopefully Jackie's gonna like what I've got in mind for it. Well, Joel, you're about to find out. Hi, Jackie. Hey, Joel, you all right? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, really, really good, thanks. Good. So, did you get that little old radiogram? I have, yes. It's a wonderful little thing. Oh, good. I'm so glad you like it. I thought it was really special, and I was hoping it could stay as a music centre, but maybe update the technology so you can connect your phone, perhaps? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think we're on the same page. So I'm thinking um, we're going to strip out all the old parts, all new bits inside, new speakers, new amplifier, Bluetooth connectivity, um, so you can just connect your phone up wirelessly and play your music through it and dance around the living room and have loads of fun. Ah, I love the idea of that. I'm there. I love a good dance. So what are you thinking for the surface area? We're just going to give it a lick of paint all over and do like a really sort of, you know, popping design on it, really, just to make it look like a really, really cool uh, contemporary piece of furniture. I'm sensing that'll take a lot of work, Joel. Yeah. <laughs> so what are we talking about in terms of budget? Uh, budget wise, we're going to be looking around about 900. 900 pounds? Wow. But this thing's going to be a work of art. Mm, I hope so. Oh, yes. Huh. OK, well, let's aim for £900 and just go for it. Fantastic. Will do. OK, Joel. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing it and hopefully having a little boogie. Bring your dancing shoes. <laughs> yeah, I will. All right, Joel, I'll leave you to it and good luck and I'll see you soon. Fantastic. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks. Bye. You too. Thanks. Bye-bye. Just got off the phone with Jackie. She seemed really, uh, really up for my ideas, so... Hopefully, uh, it will turn out as good as I've sold it to her. Budget's quite high on this one, so it's a bit sort of nerve-wracking uh, as to sort of what we might sell it for, but I think there's still going to be a good profit in this. Joel and Jackie have agreed a plan to get the radiogram all singing and dancing. He's going to attempt to put a new spin on it, but with a massive £900 investment, it needs to be a big hit. Just outside Perth, Sarah's taken delivery of the table and chairs. What do you make of them? They are quite sturdy. They seem to be quite well made. I'm liking the table. I've got a few ideas, but it would be good to hear what Jackie thinks. I've had the chairs and tables sent over to Sarah. I'm not sure what she's going to make of it, but there's a lot of timber there and a lot of work to be done to bring it up to the 21st century. Sarah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so I see you got my chairs and the table. I did. What do you think? Well, they're, they're sturdy and mm. they're solid. I can see this in some kind of country cottage kitchen somewhere. Yeah, because it has got that kind of country cottage vibe. So I was thinking, should we make it more modern? I just couldn't see all of this timber being thrown away. I know. You know, there's a lot here. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure on the extendable bit. It's there, mm -hmm. but you might have to have a look at that. And I was thinking maybe the legs could be a different colour, just to twist it up a little bit. Yeah. What, uh -huh. what do you think? No, I think you're, you're coming from the right angle. So I think, I mean, a first is going to be get rid of the seat pads completely. Yeah. You know, and the focus could be on the fabric that I use on the new seat pads. Some nice, maybe even some kind of florally kind of 
oh. themed fabric on some kind of botanical kind of thing. Nice. And then you could maybe link in the table legs with that same kind of colour. Nice. And then use some of the kind of patterns that are found on the new fabric seat pads on the top of the table. Does that sound okay? It's coming together. I can kind of, yeah, visualise. As for the colours, that's up to you. Yeah. So that's a lot and a lot of work. What are we saying budget-wise? I think to do all the work, I'd probably need about £400. Perfect. I'm very, very happy with that. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, give me a shout, you know, if you, if you come across any problems. But otherwise, I'll see you when it's done. Brilliant. I can't wait. Take care. Bye. Bye. It was really good to chat to Jackie, actually, and bounce a few ideas off each other. I think we're on the same page. I'm actually growing more and more fond of this table and chairs as time goes on, so I think I'm going to really enjoy getting started. Sarah has a budget of £400 to try and rejuvenate the dining set with some modern floral flair. But with the top legs and seat pads to tackle, let's hope she doesn't make a meal of it. With her makers ready to revamp, in London, Jack is sorting through the box of crockery. So, quite a lot here, actually. These are really beautiful. At the recycling centre, Jackie didn't know what she was going to do with this lot. You've got a plan now, though, right? I'm thinking these could be really nice individual candles. All of these without the saucers. But then also, if I stuck the cup to that saucer, and then that could become a candle as well, which would be nice. And then maybe I could make some cake stands with the rest. I've never made a cake stand before, but there's always a first time for everything. Ooh, a maiden voyage and cake. Like the sound of this. I kind of like this. Or... Sorry. <laughs> or... <laughs> I do that, that and that. Yeah, I'm happy. With the side plates divided into piles of three, Jackie now needs to work out how to skewer them together. What I'll need to do on every single one of these plates is find the centre. That's the boring bit. That's my cue. We've all had a mid-afternoon slump. And in the 1840s, lady-in-waiting Anne Maria Russell found she was always hungry between lunch and dinner. You OK, Jackie? I'm really nervous I'm going to break something. I don't want to break any of them. Go easy. Slow and steady wins the race. So anyway, Anne Maria asked for tea, bread and butter and cake to be served around 4pm. And the tradition of afternoon tea was born. I think that looks rather nice and quite dainty, doesn't it? I just need my cucumber sandwiches, my little French fancies and a few petty falls. That's lovely. Stand number one might have been a piece of cake. But Jackie's now moving on to tackle her homemade candles. I've got everything that I need. I've got my pan water. I've got my bowl. The wax is going to go in the bowl. That's going to be like my little bain-marie to melt the wax, which I'll then tip into the jug with the spout, which I'll then tip into each of the cups. While the wax melts, Jackie is gluing the wicks to the bottom of each of the cups. Perfect. So that's all of those done. Time to pour. Oh, it looks like a wee cup of tea. Perfect. So I'll just leave them to set. Yeah. I'm happy. So far, Jackie's spent £29.49 and pence on this project. She's really embracing the chintz to make the most of this mismatched china. But will her cake stands and candles be anyone's cup of tea? In Sandbatch, Joel is ready to strip out the old radiogram. So, just before we start, 
I'm just going to remove these. These were the original instructions that, uh, that came with it. So I'm going to try and incorporate these into the design a little bit, so I need to put these somewhere safe. Joel wants to retain as many of the original fittings as possible. But in order for this record player to meet safety standards... It's had a hard life. All the old electrics have to go. They weren't lying when they said this got used a lot. It's always a good day when you get things apart without breaking them. With the unit stripped, Joel's lightly sanding the carcass to key the surface in preparation for painting. OK, so we've got this all sanded down, so happy with all of that, how that's gone. Next thing to do now is to trial fit the brand new speakers and amplifier that I've got to go in here, make sure all of that fits and that it works properly. Then once we've done that, we can take all that back out and get it all painted. Joel's hoping to mount his new speakers where the old ones used to sit, using spacers to set them back a bit. In layman's terms, it'll give them more room to create a bigger sound. The thing with these old radiograms is that they were notorious for not having particularly great sound, and that's just purely because of the technology that was available at the time. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they had to be built to a certain price point to, to fit in the marketplace, but having something really good quality to listen to music on, it, it makes a huge difference. With the speakers in place, Joel is wiring up the crossover box, which, uh, Joel? This separates the frequencies, so this will make the high frequencies go to the tweeter and it will make the low frequencies go to the woofer, so you're getting both speakers doing the right job. Couldn't have put it better myself. That's the speakers plugged in, so it's quite a, a powerful little amplifier, this. It's Bluetooth, so you've got a um, line in as well, so you can connect a turntable. This little aerial on the back here is for the Bluetooth, so you can connect your phone or tablet. And it's tiny, which means it's not going to take up loads of space inside, which is brilliant. So now we can play some music. I just need to check I'm getting sound out of all of the speakers. OK, right, so we have sound, which is good, all working as I hoped it would. So next thing to do now is turn it all off, take it all apart and give it some paint. Joel's happy with how it sounds, but now he needs to get the radiogram looking great. He promised Jackie a bold new look, so what have you got in mind to amp it up? We're going to do some lettering over it. Um, I want to do something that's got a bit of a sort of 1980s vibe to it. I want to do something that kind of consumes the unit but doesn't take away from the features of the unit. So ideally I'd like to get something that kind of wraps around it. Um, so just figuring out how that's going to work, where it's going to go, um, if it's going to work. Um, but I'm sure it'll all figure itself out. Um, it'll be down to you to figure it out, Joel. Jackie's got a big budget riding on this one, and sounding good is all well and good, but it's only half the battle. In Perth, Sarah's making a start on freshening up the farmhouse-style furniture and is using an electric sander to remove the old paint. I've got a nice surface for doing my painting now, and I've chosen this lovely, lovely dark navy blue. And I just think it'll give it a softer appearance. Sarah's using chalk paint, which doesn't require any prep like sanding. Painting this chair is actually quite therapeutic in one, one part, but it also gives me time to think about the rest of the design. So I have my ideas. I'm moving on, I'm onto the tabletop already in my mind. With the first coat of paint left to dry, you can move on to it in person, if you like, Sarah. This is my table, and I've tested the mechanism, and it's a bit kind of juddery, and it's just not very smooth. I'm going to save myself a little bit of time, and I'm just going to actually stick it together so it's not an extendable table anymore. With the extending section removed... This should just lift off, which it does. Oh! Steady on, Sarah. I should have had a wider table. 
Next, she's using an orbital sander to remove the existing paint from the tabletop to reveal the pine surface underneath. Now, this is actually the basis of my design, this lovely fabric. So this is going to go on to the new seat cushions of the seats. But what I would also like to do is use some of the kind of elements of these flowers on the tabletops. I think it will just kind of break up all the pine. It will link the table into the chairs and it will just look hopefully quite nice at the end. Emphasis on the hopefully. Sarah is sketching a flower design onto the tabletop before using tape to replicate the lines and stain the wood with a charcoal coloured oil. So it's going to look quite nice on the pine because I think the pine's going to be quite, well, as you can see, there's light lines and dark lines going on, so it's going to be quite dramatic. Do I want it to be dramatic? Oh, I don't know. I'm thinking I should have maybe had a practice run on some pine before I did this. It's a bit late for that, I'm afraid. If you're not happy with the design when the tape comes off, the only option is to get the sander out. I do like it, but does it fit with the design? It's not screaming floral, if that's what you're going for. Not entirely set on her tabletop design, Sarah's moving on, creating the seat pads for the chairs. Whenever I use scissors, I always want to open and close my mouth at the same time, so it's like... Just like eating an imaginary sandwich. Using a specialist foot on her sewing machine, Sarah's hand-making piping for the new seat pads. Right, my lovely finished piping. So that's going to look really nice going round the whole edge of the seat pad and it brings out these little colours here and I think it's going to be really nice. I've got loads to do. I've got three chairs still to sand and do the base. So huge amounts to do. I think Jackie will like it. I do. I think it, I'm starting to see it all come together. I think she will be pleased. Jackie's expecting a showstopper of a dining set, so no pressure. In London, Jackie's getting her cake stands and candles photo ready. Oh, she's all so pretty. When she found the box of crockery, it was about to be toast. But now... It's time for tea. Jackie has created six three-tiered cake stands from the decorative side plates. She mixed and matched the pretty floral patterns with the classic blue and white china to try and make cool but chintzy centrepieces fit for any table. The stands have been finished with silver hardware topped with a handle, meaning sandwiches can be passed around with ease. The mugs, teacups and saucers have also been repurposed as candles with Jackie opting for eco-friendly soya wax and slow-burning wicks. She set out to find a new use for the unwanted crockery. But will her creations sell like hot cakes? They look really nice, don't they? I absolutely love this entire collection. I used every single element, which I love. It's making me feel quite hungry now. <laughs> Right, I'm going to take some pictures and hopefully these will find a new home. When Jackie met Phil, he was saying cheerio to the crockery. They're mostly, mostly from our sort of grandparents' era. Oh, really? So they've been handed down, but yeah. to be quite honest, they're a bit dated. Yeah. Not for us, so right. uh, it's a case of clearance. Jackie took the lot and Phil was intrigued. I, I really have no idea whether they're going to put on display or... I have no idea, to be quite honest with you. Well, Phil, they're certainly worth displaying now. Jackie shared photos online and all six cake stands were sold to a tea room and antique shop in Cranbrook. Owner Charlie thinks they're a perfect fit. Well, I think the customers are going to love them just as much as I did when I first saw them and I really don't think they're going to be sticking around here for long. Well, unfortunately, I haven't been able to catch up with Phil, 
but his lovely assortment of vintage plates and cups have managed a profit of £125.51, which is brilliant. So I'll be sending that on to him. I think he'll be pleased. Jackie spent £29.49p creating the cake stands and candles. They all sold for a total of £155. Meaning there's a profit of £125.51p heading Phil's way. Jack is in Sandbatch to catch up with Joel to find out if he's managed to resurrect the old radiogram. There's more hours than I could possibly count that's gone into doing, uh, building this, so uh, I hope Jackie appreciates uh, the work that's gone into it. I've got mixed emotions. I left Joel with a big budget of £900. I left him with a lot of work to do. That radiogram was old-fashioned, it was outdated. I'm hoping he's managed to bring it right up to date. When Jackie saved it, it looked like the radiogram had played its last tune. But now... Joel has really got the party started with this one-of-a-kind music centre. He's treated the radiogram to some classic sign-writing style with his bold and bright lettering that leaps out from the cool grey and baby blue carcass. Inside, Joel has stripped out all of the old components and has installed a new amplifier, speakers and tweeters to ensure crystal clear sound. The unit has Bluetooth connectivity and Joel's retained the original dials as a decorative nod to the radiogram's vintage style. It's been tested to ensure it complies with all electrical safety standards. But will Jackie be dancing with delight when she sees it? Joel? Jackie. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's incredible. I love it. I love the colours. Thank you. And I love it. It says boombox. I went with a kind of uh, 1980s boombox inspired design, so the grey is representative of a 1980s boombox. So how does it work? Just on the side here, there's yeah. just a, a little amplifier, so it just connects via Bluetooth to your phone, tablet, whatever, yeah. and then it's got connections on the back of the amplifier, so if you wanted to plug a turntable into it, you could do. Can I have a listen? Absolutely. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing! It sounds incredible. It's got a really rich sound to it. Oh, yeah. Sound's really important to me and, and how music sounds. So the sound is absolutely crisp, it's spot on. It's just it's really good, yeah. I did leave you with a hefty budget and I'm hoping that you're going to say it's staying there. Well, how did we do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're on budget. That's amazing. Thank you so much, Joel. I, I really appreciate that. I love it. I should get that picked up. Thanks so much, Joel. See you, Jackie. Thank Take you. Care. Take Bye. care. Bye. That went really well. Jackie loved it, um, which is great because I love it and I've put so much work into it. So I'm really pleased that Jackie likes it so much. And, uh, and hopefully now it's going to go off to a, a new home and someone's going to cherish it forever. It's amazing. That radiogram looks totally different. It's been bought bang up to date. It's all singing, it's all dancing, it's colourful, it sounds fantastic. Well done, Joel. When Jackie met Bob and Janet, they were saying goodbye to the radiogram. Your mum kept it in good condition. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It was her pride and joy. We tried to get it up and running again. It sort of worked, but... Yeah. Uh, the electronics, or the, well, the electrics inside yeah. are, you know... Yeah, absolutely. 50-year-old vintage stuff, so... <laughs> Bob was hopeful that Jackie could give it another life. If somebody can make use of it and love it as much as my mother did, I will be absolutely ecstatic. Well, Bob, Joel certainly lavished love all over it. 
but will Jackie find a buyer for this high price tag item? She shared photos online and it was snapped up by a contemporary art gallery in Daventry. Manager Kim is super impressed. I absolutely love this boom box because it is inspired by the graffiti movement. It is of a high quality and it's full of colour. Jack is in Flatwell Heath to show Bob the results and hand over some cash. Hi, Bob. Hi, Jackie. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm fantastic. Well, I met you at the recycling centre and you were about to get rid of an old radiogram. I believe it belonged to your mum, didn't it, Bob? It did, yes. And it was literally on every minute of the day. In 1963, she bought it. Wow. Well, it was something that I took to an incredible creator called Joel. Would you like to see what he's done with yes. your mum's radiogram? Brace yourself, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is incredible. It looks really, really good. It was sold to a very cool arts and homewares shop in Northamptonshire. And I've got profit for you of £600. I am gobsmacked. And what might you do with that money there, Bob? My mum's charity was British Heart Foundation. I'll probably give my brothers £100 each, so oh, that's, that's nice. £400. You know, they can go out and celebrate my mum and £200 to the charity. Wow, that's lovely. Well, look, it was lovely to catch up with you again. Take care. Thank you again. Bye. It's Bye. Well done. Bye-bye. Joel came in on budget at £900. The revamped radiogram was sold for a whopping £1,500, leaving Bob with a profit of £600 that he's going to share with his brothers and donate a portion to his mum's favourite charity. Jack is in Perth to see how Sarah's fared with the dining set. Has she managed to pull off the modern makeover she was hoping for? When Jackie left me this table and chairs, I wasn't really that inspired, I must admit. But when I got into the actual process and the changing of it, I really did actually fall in love and I'm quite pleased with what I've done. I've just got to hope that Jackie feels the same way. Now, although that dining table and chairs, they were sturdy, but they lacked personality and they were thick with paint. I am keeping my fingers crossed and hoping that Sarah's managed to inject a bit of style and character into them. When Jackie saved them, the dining table and chairs were functional, but lacked flair. But now... They're a feast for the eyes, thanks to Sarah's detail-driven design. Taking inspiration from the floral fabric of her new seat pads, Sarah's replicated delicate floral motifs on the tabletop to try and tie this dining set together. She's given the chairs and table base a coat of striking anthracite paint to contrast against a pale, newly sanded pine top, which has been oiled for durability. And using the discarded table extension sections, Sarah's created two bonus square top side tables. She's certainly put in the hours, but will Jackie think it fits the brief? Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. I love the colours. Black was just too harsh. And it was just a bit too probably shiny as well. So this yeah. this really works a nice navy blue, um, and then just keeping the nice wood on show as well just mm. softens the whole piece, I think. And then you've kind of replicated mm -hmm. some of the pattern. Well, that was the basis of the whole design, really, the fabric, because right. I used the colours from the fabric to you know use on the yeah. chairs, and then the patterns on the fabric. This is what I've done on the tabletop. I've applied a few kind of different yeah. flowers and things, so it all kind of links it together. I love it. What's this? Hold on a second. What are those? <laughs> well, you left me an extendable dining table, but when I actually went to work on it, the extension bit wasn't really working properly, so I thought, instead of throwing those bits out, I'll make some little coffee tables out of the actual excess wood. <laughs> Sarah, that's amazing. I love it. I think it looks really crisp. 
So I've got extra bits there. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> so the budget, if I remember rightly, we said 400. Yes. How have we done? I'm happy with £400. <laughs> That's my happy clap. <laughs> That's my happy clap. I love it. Sarah, thank you so much. I will get this picked up. OK. Bye. Bye. I'm so happy with Jackie's reaction. All the hard work that I put into that table and chairs and it's actually paid off, so I couldn't be, couldn't be happier. Well, wow, what a transformation. Sarah has certainly worked her magic. That dining table and chairs, they look crisp, they look stylish and saleable. When Jackie met Greg, his table and chairs were surplus to requirements. I don't have the space, unfortunately. We recently bought a house and the lady who owned the house kindly left them for us. Right. Um, we've used them uh, because we've just recently procured a new set. Jackie snapped them up and Greg was hopeful. I'll wait to be blown away and see what happens with it. <laughs> I'll keep an open mind. <laughs> Well, Greg, let's hope Sarah's new spin blows your socks off. Jackie shared photos on social media, but did she manage to secure a sale? She's impressed with to show Greg the dining set's new look. But will she be handing over a profit? Hi, Greg. <laughs> Hello. Lovely to see you. Oh, lovely to see you too. Wow. How are you? I'm well. I'm very well. So, we met at the recycling centre. Yes. And you were literally about to throw away a table with some chairs. Yes. But they didn't really belong to you, did they? No, they came with a house. We used them and then we got a new set, so we had no use for them. It's actually something I gave to an amazing designer and maker called Sarah. Okay. okay. And um, this is what has become of the dining set. That's amazing. That's really good. Oh, that's I love the stenciling work and the cushions on the seats. That's really cool. Oh, that's wow. <laughs> that's amazing. I'm really impressed. Someone else loved it because it was actually sold to a private buyer. Oh. Um, and I have some profit for you of three hundred and fifty pounds. Oh. Oh, for your table. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> I can't, still can't believe it. <laughs> if you don't mind me asking, Greg, what will you do with the money? We're going to put it towards the house. Furniture came from the house, so it makes sense to just put it back into the house. Thank oh, that's you. brilliant. Look, thank you so much. It was so nice to catch up with you again. Oh, thank you so much, Jackie. I oh, really appreciate it. It's an absolute pleasure. See you soon. <laughs> thank you. OK, bye. -bye. Bye. bye. Sarah came in on budget at £400. The tables and chairs sold for a total of £750, leaving Greg with a profit of £350 to go to all some nice things for his new home. Jackie put a stop to three items being lost to landfill. The crockery has been given a new lease of life. The farmhouse-style furniture has been completely rejuvenated. And the radiogram has burst into new life and is cherished once more. Well, I gave Joel and Sarah tricky items to transform and they pulled out all the stops to maximise their potential. So that's another three things saved, revamped and rehomed. Brilliant. Brilliant.